What's up, Bigfooters? Another outdoorly enthused, folks. My name is Brady, and today we are back out in the Wichita Mountains. And today I am hiking a brand new location that I've never even been before. Right now I'm on the Mount Scott Service Road. My reason for being here today is because I was looking on Google Earth the other day. And after looking at it, I figured that looks like a pretty dang good spot. I think this is the most forested area in all of the Wichita Mountains, actually. I don't think there's another spot in the Wichita Mountains, at least that people can get to, that is as forested as this spot. This road is almost six miles long one way, so 12 miles there and back. So today I'm really just scoping out this new location. I've already seen tons of animal sign, tons of animal tracks all along this road, tons of animal scat. I've already seen two very big longhorns on this trail. This is an excellent location. It's very mountainous. There are lots of spots where people can't really even get into around here. Whew. Very squatchy. It's very hot today. Whew. It's about 80, 85 degrees right now, but not complaining. It's very nice to be able to get outside on a day like this. So right now, I'm just walking in this little creek, looking for any little edibles that a Sasquatch could scoop up. So there's tons of little minnows in the water. You could manage to scoop up a couple of these. You have a nice little snack on your hands. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Now something I didn't quite like about my previous location I was checking out was the lack of a year-round reliable water source. Smaller, shallow water sources are going to dry up pretty quickly, and that's all we could find at my previous location. Spots like this, um, just little Little creeks, areas like that, dry up really quickly in this Oklahoma heat. So what I'm doing now is really trying to find a larger, sustainable body of water in this area. Because obviously all animals need water to survive. And in a hot area like this, animals are really going to congregate around that water. So you find the water, you find the animals. So that's my main goal for today. You know, I've been doing some thinking lately, a dangerous pastime. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts about this, but it's about Sasquatch population numbers. And I was thinking like, how many square miles would one Sasquatch need to stay hidden, stay elusive, but also have plenty of food resources, things like that. Because some parts in the Wichita Mountains are pretty dang forested, like this place we're at today. There are a few sightings in the area. I'm pretty convinced that Sasquatches are in the Wichita Mountains. But it had me wondering, like, how many Sasquatches would there be in the entirety of the Wichita Mountains? It's not really that big of a mountain range, and really it's more like a, a hill range than anything, with only a couple that are technically considered mountains. I've just been wondering how many Sasquatches there would be in this area, or how many Sasquatches you think are in your area. I've kind of gone back and forth a little bit on this. I've heard some people say that they're very rare. I think that's the main consensus, that they are extremely rare. And then I've heard other people say that they're doing just fine. There's plenty of them. There are Sasquatches everywhere. But then at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, Cliff was talking about the individuals in the Bluff Creek area based on the footprint casts found there and how there are far fewer Sasquatches there than he previously hypothesized. And that rather than all these sightings in an area being from all individual different Sasquatches, that they could just be from a couple Sasquatches in this one area. So based on those numbers, I'm thinking maybe there's 
a handful in the entirety of the Wichita mountains. But then uh, it also has me thinking of Professor Meldrum's presentation discussing what a Sasquatch would need and that if you overlap Sasquatch sightings map with a bear habitat map, they line up pretty dang well. And that indicates that there's enough food for a large omnivore. But as far as everybody knows, bears are not native to the Wichita mountains. So does that mean there's not enough food sources in the area to sustain Sasquatches long term? And that they're just moving through? Or is it possible that since we just drove the bears out of the area, these elusive Sasquatches could be hiding in these small pockets? I don't think it's very many. Maybe a handful or less. I don't know, it's not like there's a huge connective mountain range or valley system connecting the Wichita Mountains with other parts. It's really once you're out of the Wichita Mountains, a lot of the area is hills and flatland. I don't know, what do you guys think? How many Sasquatches do you think there are? How many do you think live in particular areas? Do you think they're mostly solitary creatures? Do you think they mostly live on their own and just travel up and down mountain ranges? What do you guys think? I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say on this. All right guys, I was coming down to this creek to get some water and this guy freaked me out. Oh my goodness, that is a huge bison right in the middle of the trail. Oh, he's stomping his feet. That's not a good sign. He's been there for like 30 minutes now. He was there on my way this way and he's still here on the way back. So hopefully this isn't his area because that's the way I need to go. Hey buddy. <whistles> Luckily, the bison and longhorn around here are pretty used to seeing people, so I think they're I think they're tamer than most other bison would be. But that is still a very dangerous wild animal. <sighs> Gosh dang, this happens like every time. <laughs> and I'm still surprised. That was so close. I got like 20, 30 feet away from him. That was, it made me very nervous. Something interesting of note regarding that little bison encounter was that thing was standing right next to the trail the entire time I was approaching it. I was looking in the direction I saw it last time. So I was looking on the left side of the trail, making sure he wasn't still over there. So, after not seeing him on the left side, I just assumed that he had passed through the area and he was no longer there. Then as I was squatting down to get some water, I look up and I see him right in front of me on the right side of the trail. And it's noteworthy because that bison was massive, it wasn't trying to hide from me at all, and it still took me a minute to notice it was even there. So that just goes to show it's easy to remain out of sight. And that's how Sasquatches would do it so well because they're trying to be elusive. And really, if they're standing somewhere where you're not looking, then you're not gonna see it. That bison was just standing completely still. If I hadn't just looked up, I wouldn't even have noticed that it was there. And I would have just kept drinking from the creek as if there wasn't a ginormous bison standing right in front of me. So even though Sasquatches are very elusive, um, it doesn't take much to hide from humans. Look, right there, what is that? What is that, right there? Look, look, hold still. Hold still, look at the camera. It's, it's, it's right there, it's holding still. Wait a minute. There he is. Bigfooters, please, if you see a Sasquatch in the distance, walk up to it and make sure it's not a stump. Please.
All right guys, I just came upon this glorious little pond along the side of a trail. I had no clue that this was back here. I didn't see this pond on any maps. I really wish I brought my fishing stuff. I would just sit back and relax for a few minutes and fish. I'm already seeing tons of tadpoles in here. I can hear tons of frogs already. So I'm sure this is a popular meeting spot for animals because all animals need somewhere to drink from. I think on this far edge, a Sasquatch could come down, drink some water. People along the trail definitely wouldn't be able to see them. And they would hear anybody coming down to the pond before we would even see the Sasquatch. And then it could just escape back up into these nooks and crannies. It's gone before you even know it's there. I'm just gonna sit back and relax for a few minutes. Take this in. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you want to see the things that nobody else sees, you have to go to the places nobody else goes. This place is frog heaven. There are so many tadpoles all over the water. Everywhere you walk, there are frogs leaping left and right all around you. There are so many frogs. Like you have to watch where you step so you don't step on a frog. Not only are the frogs a potential food source, but the snakes and the fish that are gonna feed on the frogs are also potential food sources. Plus, any deer or other animals that come down to drink from the water, this is an excellent location. This is such a good spot. This would be an excellent spot to like bring a kayak down, just sit on the, on the pond at nighttime, just sit and listen. But this is definitely a good spot to return to. And even if not for Bigfooting, at least for fishing. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's gonna about wrap up this trip to the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. Today we got some great exploring in. I've never been to this location, but I've seen it on maps many times. I can already tell you this is an extremely squatchy location. So this general area might just be the best spot for a Sasquatch research area. I think if there are Sasquatches in the Wichita Mountains, they are very likely gonna be in this location. If I need to find a spot that's a little off trail, I don't want to set up any sort of research site on the trail. Hopefully sometime in the future we can finish hiking this entire thing. We've made it about two thirds of the way I'd say, or a little bit more than halfway. Um, so we still have a lot more exploring of this area to do in the future. But so far I would definitely say that that pond was the most likely spot to set up a research area. So now we're just gonna head on back and we're gonna call it a day. But really with that said, I think that's gonna about wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to tune in next week for another Squatching Adventure. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep Squatching.